Hello and welcome to the Crypto Masters Podcast, helping the general public to understand crypto assets. My name is Brian McCoy. My name is Ross Heaton. And we are the The Crypto Crypto Masters. Masters. asset that is the topic of today's podcast. Today we're going to discuss a crypto asset called Reserve Rights Token. This is part of the Reserve Protocol, which has some lofty goals to create a decentralized censorship resistant stablecoin. That's a mouthful, Brian. I like it already. (laughs) I got it out though. Pretty pretty well. Uh, Hey, a quick reminder, our goal here at the Crypto Masters is to provide information about crypto assets to help the public decide if it's something that they may want to invest in, do further research on their own. We're really looking here for more longer term investments. So we're not giving like trading advice so you can jump on um, your, your trading app and, and make a quick trade. This is more of a, for long term investors. Absolutely. And everyone listen to these words. This is not financial advice and it's really not. You know, we're we're empowering you through knowledge to make your own investment decisions. So that's our goal here. You know, as Brian said, we're long-term, not in short sales. This is purely what the, the tech does. So you can make a, you know, a, a best guess out there in the crypto space. All right. Well, we're going to hope for more than guessing, but uh, <laughs> enough information and we'll say it's more than a guess, but yes, <laughs> now, Ross, we're, we are in podcast 20. So this is our 20th podcast. So we've, talked about uh, 19 other uh, coins and tokens and many, many to go, um, but a little bit of a milestone here. And in previous podcasts, we've maybe referenced stable coins because uh, stable coins have become a very big part of the uh, crypto universe, but we haven't discussed them on here because stable coin is stable. So why would you invest in it? Um, and that's kind of a, something that we're going to talk about a little bit um, on, on this evening show. So this will be our first uh, stable coin. And just so people know, stable coin, um, and there's lots of examples, USDC, um, Tether. Um, there's li- li- literally several of them out there. They are literally pegged to a fiat currency. Normally, that's to the US dollar. So there's a lot of those out there and they have different uses in the crypto world but one isn't one reason you buy it isn't so that it appreciates against the dollar because it's pretty much going to stay at a one-to-one ratio with it so this there's something about this um particular um token um that um allows for something different or some appreciation in the context of a stable coin. So that's what we're gonna talk about tonight, Ross. Absolutely, let's get into it. And actually, just a quick note, Brian, this is our first um, suggested podcast from our uh, uh, fans out there. So uh, fan, shout out to Fan you. base, yes. do ask and we shall do our best. And, and good choice because uh, this is an interesting one. And Ross, before you jump into yours, I should say that the uh this protocol actually interestingly has has two um really two utility tokens one is the actual stable coin which is uh, rsv you'll be talking about that we'll be talking about both of them Mm -hmm. and then the one that is investable because it fluctuates is rsr so with that ross why don't you uh why don't you talk about the the reserve protocol a little bit I mean, if you're tuning in right now, Brian, you're getting a two for one treat. I'll just say that right off the bat. (laughs) But, you know, the reserve protocol attempts to address um, currency defacement issues, um, which everyone's talking about right now. Um, Stimulus money is going out. um, Currency is being printed. And there's hyperinflation going on. Um, I mean, even on a small scale with the U.S. dollar, but on large scales like uh, what's going on in Venezuela. I mean, inflation rates are there and I don't know what what the current figure is, but I mean, it's in the thousands of percent. Um, So, you know, we still got that going on. So this is a relevant, very relevant issue, Um, but also wants to fix slow and expensive international transactions um, and money transfers. You know, it's designed to 
just completely host a uh, completely decentralized stable coin that cannot be manipulated by these you know filthy governments that are just printing money out there <laughs> but yeah it's it's aimed to be a store of value um and real quick just a uh kind of why if you're listening on youtube watching us on youtube you'll s barely see my ethereum flag back there but reserve was built on ethereum and they do have plans for moving it um to many more platforms out there so keep a note of that um uh, plus one to the platforms. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's planning to be interoperable on all platforms. It's not just going to be on Ethereum and then maybe switch one day, but it plans to be on many platforms. So yeah, this is uh, pretty epic. Well, you know, you know, early on um, with stable coins, the one of the main purposes was just somewhere to park your, um, your, your crypto, assets instead of taking it back and converting it into fiat and then on ramping back to a platform or, or a, um, you know, trading area. Um, you could just take your, you know, if you sell your Bitcoin, you could just convert it into USDT or USDC. And essentially you'd keep it there on the exchange and, you know, you wouldn't have to keep going off and on on fiat. You, you could, act much more quickly if you saw a buy opportunity. So that was kind of the initial reasons. And I would say, you know, Tether was a, clearly a, a leader in, in that. Um, but, you know, as you said, the, the, first of all, the hyperinflation in some countries is incredible. You know, they can't, uh, something yeah, has to be done. Insane. But even more so now with the, um, the devaluation of the currency with all the stimulus, People, even like us in the U.S., are thinking, are, are being very, are having some concerns about just parking money in in dollars because they're just going down in value. And so, um, I, I think Reserve, as we'll talk about, is trying to take that up a notch. It's not just the plan is not just to have it pegged to the U.S. dollar, but we'll get into that. So let's talk a little bit about how they, they intend to do it. I mentioned that the stable coin is called RSV. That's their the reserve token. And so then they're also gonna have a reserve vault that stores some tokenized assets, including RSV and RSR. Um, the vault's designed to keep the ratio of the reserve tokens and the tokenized, tokenized assets at a one-to-one -one ratio, right? You want that, uh, there's been a lot of talk about um, some uh, stable coins that allegedly may not be fully backed. Um, so, you know, this can be an issue um, and Reserve has, has addressed that up front. They're not gonna allow that. The, the vault is um, always gonna be, uh, attempt to be at, at a one-to-one -one ratio. And, and then they have protocols to make sure that that happens, in, incentives and such. Now, so if the price of Brian, that that that's kind of the key name from reserve, you know, reserve. It's like, it's got this vault backing the, the stable coin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. That you can be confident in that. That's true because some people have concerns that some others aren't. Um, mm. So, so if the price of the token uh, goes above one, then the vault will sell some new RSV tokens. And then if it goes below one, the protocol will purchase RSV tokens again, maintaining that balance. Um, and RSR tokens can be sold or purchased by the protocol. And eventually the vault will include different stable coins, different tokenized assets, such as real estate, art, and commodities. And I'll mention that uh, again in a minute, Ross. But why don't you talk about um, RSR and, and, just, and just how that works and why someone might want to invest in it. Absolutely. So um, picking off, you know, piggybacking off you a little bit here, Brian. Um, just to reiterate, you know, the value of RSR is a token that can fluctuate. And in a way, Brian, I'm almost detaching RSR um, from the reserve protocol. It's, it's really, you know, a, a token running on the Ethereum blockchain that the protocol can kind of use to aid in that backing in the vault, um, so to speak. Um, and, and that's to keep that RSV backed and stable. At, you know, currently the dollar, um, and again, as Brian mentioned, this is not the long-term goal. Um, you know, we're not sure what that's going to look like in the future, but 
they do plan to get off that peg to a US dollar um, down the road. Um, so you're probably asking, what do I do here? What do I buy? What do I buy RSR? Do I buy RSV? I know I was confused when, when I was first reading about this, like, okay, what this sounds all great, but what do I do? If you're, if you're believing in this project, you believe in the team, you believe in the protocol, put your money in RSR. That's going to fluctuate and should reflect the success of this protocol, this smart contract, this team, all that stuff. Um, if, you, if you wish to hedge against your native currency, um, great example is the Venezuelan um, Bolivar. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> or British Pound or something like that. You know, you want to buy RSV because that's going to be stable to the US dollar. So again, if you believe in the US dollar, um, you almost want to buy this. That's kind of that idea going on there. All right, well, let's um, talk about some of their planned phases. When the um, roadmap first came out, they were going to have three phases, a centralized phase, a decentralized phase, and then an independent phase. But um, I understand that they totally just skipped the uh, centralized phase and went into the decentralized phase. And that's when it's backed. The, the reserve is backed by a basket of assets that are denominated in U.S. dollars. But, they, but the assets are decentralized. And that's, that's where we are now. We talked about it, it's pegged to the US dollar. But the independent phase, when that comes about, is it's gonna unpeg from the US dollar and it's gonna be a, a stable, you know, like, like you said, store of value, but literally a stable one that's not pegged to US dollar. Right now, if something's stable, it's the US dollar is the world reserve currency, you, you, you peg it to the US dollar and say it's stable. But I think this protocol wants to take it a little bit further and say, wait, just in case the US dollar isn't so stable, just in case all that money printing going on over there is going to devalue it, we're going to set up a stable coin or token that is stable among assets. So kind of interesting thought there. And when they get there, they're going to have, they're going to be able to tokenize We've talked about and we'll talk about more, I'm sure, other um, crypto assets that are going to tokenize real world assets. That's becoming a, a, a big thing. Um, even it, it already exists, but it's just going to be more so and more so. And so in, in the vault, Ross, in the future, when they decentralize it, they're going to have tokenized um, real estate. They're going to have tokenized um, art. Maybe they're going to have tokenized gold tokenized um, silver and other commodities. And rather than being um, denominated in US dollars, even those other assets are gonna be um, pegged to the stable coin value and, and, and RSV. So it's an interesting, um, interesting project, interesting thing they're shooting for. They also have an app out that's, uh, that's used currently in Venezuela, Argentina, and Colombia. Mm -hmm. Right on. And I just want to say something super quick. So just comparing currencies, I, I heard this analogy online about, you know, having something stable, as you're mentioning, Brian, coming off the US dollar. I imagine I buy you a cake and I give you a cake for your birthday. Well, the next year, let, and let's say I live in New York and you live in, um, I don't know, Jefferson, South Carolina, a rural area. A cake for me might be I don't know, 30 bucks, but um, a way you are paying me back is to just buy me a cake. Well, those cakes have different values. So that's almost kind of what I'm thinking here is what's trying to be solved. Not just, um, you know, being stable against a currency, but just stable all over the place, you know, decentralized stable. That, that, um, is, that is what they're shooting for. Yeah. yeah um, and just to get in, Couple of key facts about RSR. There is a limited supply of 100 billion tokens. Uh, over 9 billion are currently in circulation, so less percent of the max supply in circulation. And it's listed on several exchanges. So if you want to go and grab this stuff, it's on Binance, Uniswap, and Hotbit. So if you're in the US, jump on Hotbit. Or Uniswap. Oh, yeah, Uniswap. Yep. 
If you can pay those, if you can pay the gas fees. <laughs> oh, yep, I got burned. <laughs> All right, Ross, we always take a look at the team. Let's take a look at this team. Uh, the CEO and co-founder is Nevin Freeman. He previously founded uh, MetaMed Research and Paradigm Academy. Um, on, and on the uh, reserve uh, website, there is a almost hour long lecture by uh, Nevin to, I believe it's the uh, London uh, School of Economics or London Business School. And that's quite interesting. If you want to learn some more about it, I do that's suggest that. Nevin does a, does a very good job and, and um, is, is a good speaker for the project. The other co-founder is now a CTO named Matt Elder. He previously worked as an engineer at Google and IBM. Have you Overall, ever heard I think the team, yeah, the team behind the project is solid. And it also has some prominent uh, VC investors, uh, including PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel and Coinbase Ventures. Ooh, do you, do you smell a Coinbase listing? I don't know. Is, is our, our must, it's not on Coinbase because we would have said it. Right. Yeah, uh, that, yeah that's, a, that's a hot topic right now It's the Coinbase listing. Maybe that's another episode, Brian, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I guess one thing I'll add, Brian, before final thoughts, um, you know, as you mentioned, PayPal's made a big investment in reserve and I've heard rumors, um, not sure about the truth about it, but there might be a plan to add, um, you know, reserve into their uh, coin crypto offerings. You know, PayPal is already offering uh, Bitcoin uh, as payments and you can go on the PayPal app and, you know, buy and store it. But yeah, it, it could be, that could be huge for this project. Could be huge. Rumors. Rumors. Ross has got his ear to the rumor mill. Yes. I love to spread a rumor. I, I have no clue about the truth, but I love it. <laughs> All right, Ross. Well, I think that's a, a good overview of uh, Reserve Protocol and its two, its two tokens. Who's turning it on? I think it's your turn to go first, isn't it, for final thoughts? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll take it. I'm in the yeah. hot seat. Bring it on. Um, so I'm, I will be investing in this, Brian. Um, obviously, not the stable coin because, you know, we're in the U.S., um, the dollar looks pretty solid. Who knows where that'll go from here, but I will be investing in RSR. Um, and I really want to, it's not going to be a huge part of my portfolio, but, um, I, I do want to see where this goes. I want to kind of get a holding and get my, my feet wet, so to speak, and see if this PayPal rumor really is going on, uh, especially with the investors from PayPal and, you know, someone from PayPal being a uh, part of the team. Um, but Man, I feel like a broken record, Brian, but major points to Ethereum again. How many things are running on Ethereum? It's just crazy. So my too much. Ethereum, it, too much. Uh, tons of stuff is going toward, towards Ethereum. Huge points there. Um, man, Ethereum, what you got? Um, trying to see if there's anything else here. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just not too interested in the stable coin. Um, I just think... You know, Tether is just more available right now, um, more used, much bigger market cap. Uh, I think reserves, I don't know, down in the 50s or 70s right now. Tether is still way up there. So if I had to pick a stable coin, I'd pick Tether, but I will be um, pulling the trigger on RSR. All right. Well, Ross, I'm sorry that you're wrong. So have fun staying poor, as they say. <laughs> And uh, no, I, I'm joking. I, I so you give it a thumbs up. I get a thumbs down for investing for me. Okay, now that's not to say that the um, the protocol is not a good one. It is good, and it does a, a good. Uh, you know, it's it's serving a a good purpose, um, especially in the countries with uh, with high inflation. And I think the um, the, the team is doing. A, a good job. And I think when it becomes, um, you know, independent of the U S dollar and it's just sort of uh, stable as to all assets, I think that'll be really intriguing. But, um, and, and I know, I don't know that we touched on this, but you know, part of when um, the, the RSR can, can gain value is um, I think when they're, when there's 
fees or when the vault sort of appreciates, let's say there's gold um, in the vault and they're generating some fees that are in the vault, then they actually can sell some um, or RSV and essentially it's almost like burning it. So the supply goes down, which, um, you know, could help increase the price, but I don't have a, a good, a good grip on what, when that's going to happen, what are the catalysts are going to be for that. So, you know, when I can't understand that or have ability to predict it, um, I'm not going to invest in the, in the RSR. At least I don't see that right now, but I'll tell you what, I'm intrigued about the RSV. Because if I become um, really down on the U.S. dollar and, and I'm looking for a place to park some cash, maybe I want to go risk off if, if, if this run up continues for uh, the rest of 2021, let's say, and I want to go risk off with my crypto and I don't want to park it in U.S. dollars, you know, I might look for something like the RSV. I'll see where it stands at that time. But for me, that's where it's most interesting. Um, and I'm giving a thumbs down to the RSR as an investment for now. All right. I respect your opinion, but I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know, have fun staying poor. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm overusing that, but you know, that's, it's a thing in crypto land. You got to say it. So it's great. And we, we, yeah. We've agreed on like the last, I don't know, four or five assets. So we had to disagree on one. It's good. Oh yeah, it was it's about time. It was about time, Brian. But no, I well past time. No, I, I like your I like your point. It and you got a solid point there. Um, you know, I think main catalysts are in the future. Um, we're we're still in the wild west days for reserve and really crypto as a whole. Um but yeah, I, I think that, that concludes it for sure. Hey Ross, slightly off topic, but uh we might, you know, have, have a little bit of time here, but how fun is crypto? How fun is what we're doing? You know, looking at all these different um, altcoins. You know, I, 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 there are a lot of smart um, Bitcoin maximalists out there, but I don't get it. And it, not only do I not get it, but I wouldn't want to get it because this is so much fun um, learning about all these uh, altcoins that are doing different and really cool things. So crypto is fun, man. Uh, it, it's crazy from Brian and it it's it just never stops I, I mean we never stop finding cool projects um, just we're gonna, keep, we're gonna keep doing this show for as long as we want to do it and, oh yeah and, and as long as anybody will listen to us and maybe even if they don't you know what I mean we're just, that's the great thing about crypto Shoot, you know what we're, we're, next we're, week we're gonna we're gonna research and investigate another altcoin and it's gonna be fun. Whether we like it or not, it's gonna be fun and interesting. Oh, absolutely, Brian. If if no one's around to hear it, we'll still be here. <laughs> does it make a sound? <laughs> no. Yeah, I think it does, but I don't know. All right, man. Let's uh let, let's wrap up this show episode 20. But hey everybody, come back and listen to us next time on the Crypto Masters Podcast. That's right. Everyone be safe out there and enjoy the fun. Till next time.